Welcome, everybody, to another Game Vault Podcast News Hour. I'm your host, Mark, and we're here. We're almost, we're almost out of October. Um, I I saw someone say that, uh, you know, oh, hey, it's October first, and then oh no, it's almost November. Where'd the time go? Yeah, it's it's gone real fast um, this month. Um, it didn't hurt that I had a week off um, this past week before going to Comic Con on Friday. Um, so, yeah, it meant that the days just melt by. I didn't even know what day it was, really, until I looked it up so that I could put it in the thing here. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, so, it is the 20th, apparently. So, <laughs> um, right, double check that. Yes, it is the 20th. Um, yeah, so, yeah. It's been, it's been a crazy month. Um, as I get prepared for, uh, things coming out. Um, and unexpectedly playing, uh, a thing I wasn't expecting to play when it was released. Um, and then also having Comic-Con thrown in there, and then just, just stuff like that. And just anxiety from the day job and all that. So, October's been nuts. Uh, so, but a couple of, um, things for those that have followed the podcast or been a fan of the channel. Uh, I'm not going to go into it deep, but, uh, Softball Niece... Um, has chosen her college. I think it came through when I was streaming one time. Um, that she's going to be playing her softball at Alvernia University um, next year. So that is good. It's only an hour and a half drive for my, the weekend games. Um, probably not going to see every one of her games um, as, I, I've, as I've been doing. Which will be nice for my boss. But um, yeah, so she made that decision. That was pretty fun. That is D3. Um, but yeah, it's funny. She's in... She's in a league with, like, all of her other teammates have chosen other teams in that league. So, it'll be pretty funny um, when they all have to play each other. Uh, so, I might be going to road games, too, when they play those teams. Uh, so, yeah, yeah. So, that's quick update on that. Um, just because there's going to be there's a weird video that will show up either on the VODs or on the YouTube that will have me looking at my phone constantly. I think it was during Super Mario Bros. 2 um, last week. So, just wanted to let everybody know that. Um, was the reason for that. Um, but what I've been playing this week, so let's get the let's get the easy stuff out of the way. Um, we'll go through the uh, one game or two games that I have streamed. Um, uh, here, uh, so we played uh, part two of Super Mario Brothers two. Um, I got to the last level of the uh, third world, I believe. I know I got to 3-3. Um, I don't remember if I beat it. I think... I don't think I did. Uh, but... And if I did, then we're starting 4-1 next week. But either way, we're... We're in the thick of it. I have never really played World 3, so it was my first time sort of figuring it out. One of the levels is really, really short. Um, and the other ones were normal length for that. But the one was really short. Um, I think it's 3-1. Is, is is entirely short. Much shorter than I thought it'd be. Um, so we're working our way through that. Um, it's still a great game. Just some little hiccups here and there is just that, you know, since we're doing the save state system, um, you know, it may be, you know, weird and like doing like the speed run stuff of like going up. Oh, well, we got zero lives. I'm just going to restart from when I had two lives. Um, and we start the whole world over again. I'm only really save stating, um, at the beginning of worlds. Um, so hopefully that doesn't bite me in the ass, but, um, yeah, thankfully the continues are at the beginning of the world, so when we get down to our last continue, which I think we have one, um, then that is basically the save point. Um, yeah, yeah, so I'm trying not, I'm trying to keep that one and just do it, whatever, uh, it makes no difference, I'm still failing and succeeding and doing it, I'm just not getting a game over and having to start all the way back at 1-1, which would be very boring for you guys. Uh, so, yeah, the um, the game is, is interesting. Um, they, they add some new things that, that I've only seen people play, but playing it myself uh, makes it a little frustrating um, for the most part. And, um, yeah, the, uh, what's it called? Um... The idea of, I really should have, um, went in there with, uh, figuring out, um, you know, what the, uh, 
uh, what's it called um what the uh, think about it again um, what the strategy was for doing either toad Luigi or um, peach uh, because I've been getting a little confused um, in the terms of uh, that stuff um, so uh, we are sort of winging it a little bit um, here and uh, yeah if you guys have any um, ideas um, of what it should be um, feel free to let me know and uh, you know give me a list send me a list or whatever um, So, but either way, it's fun. Um, I'm probably never using Mario. I probably should use Mario in a couple cases. There are times when the speedrunners use them, but I do not. Uh, so, that's where we're at one. Um, on Saturday, we finally started a turn nights. Um, and the game is slightly different than I was expecting. It has a lot of the Persona vibes um, that we talked about. Uh, but it's a little more... Excuse me. <sighs> action focused um, than turn based RPG focused um, that I was not expecting but I'm enjoying the combat um, the one thing that frustrated me uh, through the combat in until I sort of I sort of got the hang of it by the final boss that we fought um, is the I think I compared it to like playing Bloodborne and Dark Souls like, there are two different ways to play um, that type of, of action game. Um, in Bloodborne, you're rewarded for being aggressive because you get your health back if you if you kill the guy um, while you still have while you still have your health reduced. Um, so you're 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 rewarded for being aggressive and going in there and like hitting as much as you can and then dodging. Um, Dark Souls is more you know, trying to figure out the pattern and dodging and hitting, dodging, hitting, you know, or blocking, dodging, you know, it's more patient, uh, which I don't really have much of in, in action games, um, which is uh, screwing me over. I'll talk about a little bit in the final game we'll talk about uh, probably the most here. Um, and it just... Once I got over the hump, I started enjoying it more. So I'm looking forward to Saturday, or mm, we may we may have to play that Sunday. Forgot we have a Halloween party inside baseball here um, that I won't be around on Saturday. Um, yeah, so uh, next time we play it, um, either no, then extra lives after that. Hmm. God, that's coming up quick too. <laughs> that just popped in my head. That's two weeks away. Um, or less than two weeks away. So, um, yeah, the the game is interesting. I can see, Jonathan said that it would be 10 hours, nor, like 10 to 12 hours first playthrough. Um, and the, uh, if I wanted to complete, he platinumed it at um, 16 hours, which he's, he's a better... He's a better gamer in that type of game, that Dark Souls, uh, like, action game, Neo and stuff like that. He's more, um, more skilled at those type of games than I am, so his 16-hour Platinum might be a 20 for me. Uh, but I can see how it would be relatively simple to get. I haven't looked at the trophy list. Uh, but I can see multiple playthroughs, because you can either be a nice guy, or you can be an outright pervert in that game. Um... Like, one of the first things, you're going through this dating app thing, and you get a text message from the dating app, and um, the girl asks you if, you, she, if you want her to send us send you dirty pictures. And it's like a test, She they say. Like, if you say, no, what are you talking about? She's like, oh, you passed. And I guess there's maybe a trophy for just being giving the most perverted answers um, as well. I'd have to look that up, but I could see that that's a second playthrough um, to, to give those answers, because they're all there. Um, but overall, it's, it's a nice palate cleanser, uh, from the game, um, that we'll be talking about next. 
um, then, uh, you know, then I thought it was going to be too samey. Um, after coming off um, Persona and then playing uh, Metaphor um, off stream and then playing Eternites, I, I was worried that it would be too much of the same game over and over again. Um, it could be closer to near a little bit, but um, which I swear to God, we are getting back to that. Um, yeah, so we are getting started. That might be only a couple weeks. And then, like I said, we have a set schedule. Next game is, um, yeah. No, no, I want to play near. It's just when I moved my schedule, things popped up. Like, I'm like, oh, I'll do it Fridays before the news hour. And then it was like, oh, you're going to Comic-Con. <laughs> it's like, oh, shit, I can't do it that Friday. Um, so that's the only reason. The only thing we crossed out was Sundays. The only reason I'm doing this this Sunday was because of Comic Con on Friday. Um, but yeah, it's just sort of once I change the schedule, things have come up um, on those days that have nothing to do with me not uh, wanting to stream, uh, which is funny. But anyway, um, after we got we got Legends of Heroes: Trails in the Sky second chapter um, coming after this, and then. Unless if there's something new that's popping up, you know, I have a couple choices. We could do the remake of Thousand Yard Door, Paper Mario. We could do uh, Persona 5 uh, Royale. And I can print out a min-max sheet, and we can try to get ten, level 10 on all of them. Um, so you guys can see all the stories. But, um, yeah, yeah. So at least Saturday has a schedule, and Monday has a schedule. And then there's going to be a third game that'll sort of be floating in there. Um, in the new year, I might come up with a new plan I've been thinking of. But um, for now, that's sort of how it's working. Because um, I might want to start getting into some newer games playing um, all the time or, you know, multiple nights. But um, right now, that's how the schedule goes. So, we'll go for that. Um, I know uh, what you've all been waiting for. Um, I purchased Metaphor Refantasio um, because I was getting a lot of FOMO because it was getting high, high scores. Got a 10 out of 10 from GameSpot, which doesn't mean as much as it used to mean, but it still means something. Um, they still have a process, like a tribunal process, to make sure that 10 is a 10 uh, before it goes up on the website. Um, so, yeah, seeing all that, seeing all the praise... And uh, so I, I played the demo, and as you guys saw, I absolutely loved the demo. Um, I apologize for the last video. I was a little tired. That star I started that stream at 1 o'clock in the morning. So by the midway point, I was just exhausted. I just wanted to finish it so that I would have it done for you guys because I was starting to play the full game on Sunday. Uh, so, yeah. And uh, just to let you guys know, that is exclusive to you guys. Those four demo videos are just our playthrough here because I started anew on my off-stream playthrough. So you guys didn't miss much um, from there. I always have the option uh, to bring that back at any point if, if, if people clamor for it. But I'm going to finish it all my own off-stream um, myself. And I have been doing that for sure. Um, I'm currently at 36 hours um, into it. Now, I don't know if this did the good thing uh, like uh, Final Fantasy Rebirth did, or where it pauses the time when you're in the pause menu, um, but I could see that I'm pretty close to that number. There's not much shenanigans there. Having the week off, I was able to play long, long marathon stretches um, of the game, and it helped with my anxiety of me being a dumbass and worrying about work while not at work, because... You know, when you're just sitting at home on a staycation, um, your mind starts to wander a bit. So it helped that a lot. I played a lot. Um, so non-spoiler stuff, um, getting into it. Um, the, the style is crazy. I love I love the way this game looks. The, the art design on um, the characters. I got to remember to lean back when I'm doing hands. On the characters, on the cities... Because I am in my fourth city um, of five or six, I think. There might be more. Who knows? Um, and the menus. And it's just... 
I noticed something about, I'd say, second time through the demo part, which I didn't realize, uh, because at the time I was also editing, you know, check re rechecking Persona videos, uh, because I was worried about, you know, needing to re-edit some of them, which I ended up not having to do. Um, and the difference in the games, Persona very, um, you know, they're very similar. They share a lot of the same DNA. The one thing I didn't notice until I went back, played, you know, some metaphor, watched some videos of somebody playing Persona 5, and, you know, looking through the Persona 3 videos, is that Persona very much would have a color theme. Each game was a color theme. Three was like your blues and your whites and, you know, sort of that aesthetic. Um, uh, Persona 4 was very yellows, you know, in that in that color range. Very oranges, you know, like yellows and oranges and stuff like that in there. Um, and Persona 5 was red and black. Um, you know, the Phantom Thieves stuff, you know, red and black. That was, that was the color theme for that. It's very much like a... Um, you know, a th that was part of the theme of the game. Of the of the game, was the color scheme, background. The thing metaphor does differently is there are so many different colors. At first, it just looks like it's like just shot put it onto the screen, or I'm sorry, like paintball, like splattered onto the screen colors. But then as you start getting it, you realize what they did was they sort of started tying colors to things and people. And, you know, there was still a theme to the colors, even though you had a wider range in this game. Like, this game isn't just set in a certain color range. It's all over the place. And I think it makes the game better for it. It gives it more vibrancy. Um, and when you're dealing what you're dealing with in this game, which you've seen in all the previews and some reviews you read, it deals very much in racism and classism. And a lot of things like that, a lot of deep, heavy topics, and they go into it. Maybe a little too far uh, for a video game, but they do get into it. Um, very much so. And so, just to have this sort of color splash um, on the screen uh, really helps it stand out. And it's what, it's what makes it different from the other Persona games. Um, yeah, it... Uh, it was very interesting to have that realization pop in my head when everything came together uh, for it. Um, yeah, but uh, besides that, I got my, uh, you know, I got, I'm starting to get my full party members. I think I got a couple more to go. Um, I thought it was going to be like a Final Fantasy 15 thing where I only had four party members for the whole game and just these archetypes, the personas of this game. Um... Would, that's how you would have different differentiate skills and stuff. But then I started to notice that, no, you do need to be able to have different characters. Um, and I got spoiled, not in the game itself, not from an outside source. One of the levels on, uh, I think it was, I think it was Hulkenberg, who's the, the redhead with the ears, if you remember from the demo. Um... She had a skill that was like, she will gain regular experience while in reserve. And I'm like, oh, reserve means there's going to be more than four party members. And so the game kind of spoiled that for me. Um, but yeah. Yeah, so, so far, all the characters are great. The newest one we just got, I'm on the fence a little bit, but I, I just need to, to see a little bit more because... Um, the other ones have grown on me. Um, I've been with them so much longer. But, uh, they did such a good job. It's such a... The first four... First three are so tight-knit. And then the two they add in sort of become part of it. It's like... It's like in Mass Effect 2 when you're doing, like, the loyalty quest. And you sort of... That's how you start, like... Uh... I'm trying to think of the word. Because doing this on an... Making a fist at the camera on the... Uh, to describe tightness um, on an audio podcast doesn't work. Um, it makes you, it makes you feel 
like for like the character is now a part of you of the of the game. It's not just a guy person on screen. It's like, all right, I got their story, I got their backstory. You know, they are in my heart now, and they do a really good job of that um, in natural ways, like through their through their story, which is much better done than social link stories. Um, some of them can get kind of gross and you know very stereotypical, but but this they've done a good job of you know just laying out backstory and having some like ebbs and flows to the backstory um, as you go through it. Uh, but yeah. Yeah, I'm a little, I, I always get a little worried um, when I'm almost done completing things and it's like, am I almost done the game? But then I realize that, no, you're going to be adding... I still have three social links I haven't unlocked yet, which I think I'm going to get at either this village that I'm at or the next one um, to fill that out. So, um, yeah, I think... I don't know when I'm going to get... The bond with my new party member because I need to do it so that unless if she's the only one that can be that thing, I don't know. We'll see. But um, yeah, it's very well done. Um, it's kind of has some gross elements to it. I, I think Tom may enjoy it because it's not not high school stuff. I don't know if that was like a turn off or Persona stuff um, for you, Tom. Uh, but the turn based RPG stuff is is fucking great um, in there. So. That is my metaphor roundup. Um, I am ecstatic uh, to get going uh, further into it. I'm trying to finish it because um, we have Call of Duty coming out, which doesn't take over my life, but I am going to play it some. I'm definitely going to play the campaign. Um, and then Life is Strange Double Exposure is coming. And there's a couple other games. I have a whole list. Is it on my phone? Let me. I don't, I don't think it's on my phone. I think it's on... Um, the computer here, um, of games coming out that I anticipate playing. Um, I think Stalker 2 is on there, Indies in December. Uh, but yeah, so I am ecstatic. Um, it is definitely, it's going to be a fight for my game of the year. Um, I already have, uh, two of them are fighting it out there. Um, Life is Strange could join the mix if it's any, if it's good. Um, and then, you know, I might pick up a game like Bellatro, and that might just be a surprise game like Inception was. Um, not Inception, Inscription uh, was, and just sort of get me, um, you know, out of nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. And Persona 3, as good as it was, is not in a fight for the top game of the year. It's in my top five, but it's not. It's not in. It's not in the fight. It's 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 metaphor and rebirth right now, um, with life is strange having a chance, um, and open for surprises. Like I've always said, we had inscription came out of nowhere, uh, oxen free came out of nowhere, um, in like a November December release. So something could pop up, but for now I think it's going to be those two at the top for me. Um, so me and Tom might have a discussion on their game of the year uh, between we might have different number ones, which wasn't looking that way for most of the year. Uh, so anyway, that is what I've been playing. Uh, so let's move on to the news. Um, as I said on the pre-show, um, there wasn't much news. Um, so we'll and I'll apologize for all the uh, for those of you watching the video, all the political ads. Um, I cannot turn this off because IGN does not let me use my um, ad blocker here. So, um, I do apologize for that stuff coming up. But, uh, yeah. So, first off, no surprise, um, Microsoft pulls its $1 Game Pass trial ahead of Call of Duty's launch, as it did for Starfield. I don't know why people, anybody was surprised by this if they were, but it's pretty obvious they're going to do the same thing so people don't pay $1, play it for 30 days, and then drop it. I am shocked that they even brought back the trial between Starfield and Black Ops. Um, because I feel like uh, people would just take advantage of it in three months anyway. So, you either don't have it. Um, yeah, I, I couldn't find the story on that, but we will talk about that at the end, Tom. Um, the... Uh, 
the thing about the analog um, doing the uh, the N64 4K. Um, I'll talk about it after this, just so I don't forget. Uh, but for this, it, it comes down to um, you you either now that you have these games that you're going to be shuttering off in the ultimate service, like you're doing the tier system like PlayStation was doing. So you're either going to have to say, yes, the trial's good, you can use the trial and get these games that we've sort of gated off, or not have the $1 trial at all. You can't, you can't have both. Or have the $1 trial only be for the Game Pass thing that does not have the gated off content in it. You know, like whatever the basic Game Pass, Xbox Game Pass standard. That's what it's called, standard. Um... So if you if the one dollar is just for standard, then that's a way to do it. But you can't have the one dollar for every tier, and then you know block it off for certain games. Uh, so yeah, yeah, that that's kind of crazy. And um, yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, so we'll we'll just leave it here, and I'll just talk about it. Um, yeah, so. Just from the... I didn't really read deep into it. As I said, I've been playing a lot of games and just a week off. But I saw the uh, story Tom put up that uh, Analog um, is doing a, uh, a system that will play N64 cartridges. But play them 4K on 4K TVs and stuff like that. And sort of make the image 4K. Which is crazy. Um, and I, I assume... Now, Tom would know a lot more about this than I do. I would assume that only works because it's a cartridge-based system. I don't know if a CD-based system would be able to um, do that. I don't know if the CDs have a limiters on it and stuff like that. Um, you would have to probably just rip the files and do it that way. I don't know if you could play um, or upscale the way they're doing this for, like... Um, you know, original, original, I know you can sort of have the original hardware and then put it through, um, an upscaler, um, separately, but yeah, I don't know, I guess maybe, maybe they could put it into it, for some reason I feel like this is good because, it, this is works because it's a cartridge, and that just might be my, uh, naivety, um, in terms of, um, of this, of this world, but, um, yeah, but uh, Tom, Tom's the expert. He says in the chat, Metal Militia in the chat. If you're if you're watching on Twitch, um, that PS one PS one should be able to do this as well. So, yeah, yeah, it it it'll be interesting. Um, the funny thing, and this is not I'm not I'm not I'm not, I'm not having a hot take here or anything. The funniest thing that has happened in the last ten years um, is me becoming more aware of the greater gaming, um, not culture, but, like, outside of my sphere of influence and my neighborhood and my people I went to college with and all that in terms of what video, what things were popular, um, because I saw multiple headlines about this analog thing saying, um, you know, um, the N64 one of the greatest consoles of all time. And in my head, I'm like, eh, that's probably true, you know, now growing up and seeing everything. But I just remember when, when I was a kid, having a PS1 made you, like, so much cooler than the N64 kids. Like, the N64 kids were the, oh, they have Nintendo. You know, we, we, have, we have PlayStation, especially when PlayStation 2 came out. You know, compared to the GameCube and stuff. Um, but just to see, like, the nostalgia in the last, I'd say, five, ten years, where all of a sudden, N64, um, yeah, N64 um, is now, some people, some people will make arguments <laughs> that the N64 was the best console of that generation. Um, which, I, sure, um, it's not as cut and dry as some generations are, like the 360 generation, um, obviously 360 
um, outpaced PS3 and was probably the better one. And PS4 was better than Xbox One. Um, this generation is more of a tie in my mind. Um, the PS2 generation, PS2 probably definitely um, was the top system um, in terms of overall. You know, Wii's in a weird category just because it had the the, the new f motion control stuff. And then, yeah. So, but it just, it just as, as, as Metal Militia is saying in the chat, PS1 was the grown-up system and 64 was the kiddie system. And that's what I grew up with. So then seeing all this nostalgia from these writers that are probably 5 to 10 years old, younger than me, who the N64 was their system because they were kids and not teenagers, um, it's just funny to me. Yeah. I mean, sure. <laughs> could, could, you make a, could you make an argument for it? Yes, you probably could. Um, I had all of them. I was lucky enough to, I purchased a, um, which one did I purchase? Oh no, I got, I got a PS1 first, um, I got it for Christmas in 96, and then I got an N64 later, I got that, um, when Ocarina came out, which was either 97 or 98. Think? I got the 64 after the PlayStation, like a year or two after, because I got the PS1 for FF7. Um, I never played a Final Fantasy game before that. Everybody loved <laughs> Final Fantasy 7. I had to play it, so I got my PS1 for for FF7, and then got when the new Zelda came out. I got the N64 for the new Zelda. Also had Super Mario 64 with it. Um, I think I think it was at the time when that was like the built-in game. Um, if anybody knows what that timeline was, I got the 64 as the built-in game and Zelda was the, I got the gold cartridge Zelda, um, with it, which I don't know if I still have, or, I might have the gold Majora, not the Link, not the Ocarina gold. I know I have one of them's gold. Um, yeah, so I, I had, I had them all. Um, I think the only system, and I've said this multiple times on this podcast, the only system, um, I meant later, not the original launch. I'll have to look, because then people bought me a lot of games for Christmas, because I got Zelda, Mario, and Madden for Christmas, and I thought one of them was just a pack-in. Yeah, I yeah, it could be. Um, I, I usually would only get two games. I get a sports game and a regular game every Christmas, um, if I got a new system. Um, and then on non-new systems... Non, non-new systems Christmases, it was just a sports game. I get that from my, or two sports games. I get that. My aunt would get me uh, Madden and my grandma would get me NHL. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, so maybe it wasn't a pack and I don't know. But I, ha I had those three games um, for that Christmas. But, yeah. Yeah, it was, it was just, it's just weird. Um, you know, I've been lucky enough to where, you know, my... My mom was able to get me one system as we got older, um, and I was able to purchase the other ones. So I was late to the party on Wii, um, have never had a Wii U, um, but the one, uh, Saturn's like my white whale. <laughs> I want to get a Saturn, um, just to have it in the collection, not so much to use. Um, I have the Mr. Now for that, uh, but... Yeah, it was it was uh, it was fun, um, but yeah, it th this thing is going to be great. Um, it's going to solve so many problems for people that want to play those cartridge games, um, where have been taking care of them, replacing batteries, and doing all that crazy shit um, that they don't have to worry about their N64s dying or using the retro thing, which is basically shit. Um, good, but sh compared to what analog's going to do um, with this one. Since it's N since it's like exclusive N64, it'll be great. Um, so hopefully uh, during Extra Life, maybe me and Tom can talk about it um, on there as well. So, all right, next up. Um, so the uh, Xbox did their partner preview. We'll go quickly through the games. Um, Wu Chang uh, Fallen Feathers 
um, coming in uh, 2025. Um, it looks a lot like Black Myth from what I saw, and it says it here, uh, but has a female main character, so you know it's woke. Uh, so, you know, that game looks pretty cool. Um, you know, so uh, multiplayer for control. Um, it was released. I was shocked by this. Um, it's called the uh, FBC Firebreak. Um, yeah, it's uh, I, it, and that's coming sometime in 2025. This should be interesting. Um, but yeah, anything Alan Wake, anything get, Remedy, give me anything you want. Be great. Um, can't wait to play this. This might be a stream game um, next week. Um, or I might, I might play a little bit of this on stream for uh, Extra Life. Um, so we are... Um, the Extra Life DLC is coming out on the 22nd. Um, so we'll see. I, I should definitely hold off on it because I'm going to be playing Metaphor. So no problem there. Uh, Kronos, the new Dawn is announced. Um, it's another blooper team game. So, uh, 50-50 on whether it's good. Um, Blooper Team is usually, um, iffy, um, but Silent Hill 2 is great. Um, I'll catch up on chat in a second. I just want to get through all these games first. Uh, Pirate Yakuza. I, I have to play Infinite Money first, but th there's not a better, like, a Dragon Guide End game that's more in my wheelhouse than a stupid... Pirate Mijima game. It's going to be amazing. It's coming out in February. Um, Animal Well, which I've heard great things about, is now going to be um, on Xbox. Um, Blind Fire, which is another team shooter. Um, yeah, very colorful. Um, early Access um, is out for that. Uh, Mouse P.I. Um... You know, sort of a mix, like sort of a Cuphead sort of look to it. Old Mickey Mouse commercials. Um, it's a first-person shooter, apparently. So, um, that should be interesting. Um, La the Legend of Babu. Um, also coming in 2025. Um, it's a game that has a doggo in it. Look at that doggo. That doggo's great. Um, that should be coming soon. Uh, Eden Zero, um, you know, it's uh, based on a manga by Hiro Masashima, uh, so uh, if you've read that manga, um, there's a video game coming for it. I had not heard about it until this um, preview. Uh, Eternal Strands, um, uh, looks like, you know, and it was an action game with fire, ice, giant swords, so... It'll be on Game Pass, so I'll probably play it. Um, uh, Miss Fall Hunter. Um, a, a, again, another Souls-like. We'll see how that goes. Um, that's coming out in 2025. Um, a Wheel World um, a bike game. Um, and that's coming in 2025. Um, it'll be on Game Pass. Um, yeah, just going through colorful lands on a bike. Um and then the most mid-game of all time, Phasmophobia, is coming to Xbox in October. We'll just go ahead past that. Um, and an early access for Subnautica 2 was announced. Subnautica, one of those surprise games um, that was more than what you thought it was. Um, and it has an entirely new planet and co-op on this one, so be on the lookout for that. Um, yeah, let's see what chat was saying while I went through all that. Um, yeah. So, oh yeah, Phasmophobia, maybe they'll make it fun this time for Xbox. Uh, I know, right, chat? Um, yeah, so those, those are the things announced at the Partner Showcase. Um, and it's, um, yeah, so we have next up, the Silent Hill 2 make remake sold a million copies in less than a week um yeah looks like they'll get a chance to uh remake um another one they should remake the first game but they'll probably do three um Silent Hill 2 is probably the best one to do this for 
um, this the second one for sure. Um, yeah, very much um, a surprise uh, blooper team that made me roll my eyes when it popped up that they were doing it, but it looks like they did a great job. Um, you know, got an 8 out of 10 from IGN here. Um, yeah, so it's uh, just PC, PlayStation 5. Um, don't know if we're going to go full multi um, system, if it's going to uh, Konami hasn't said anything if it's going to go to Xbox yet, but yeah, hell yeah that they're so good. If this means that they can have the same quality for other games from the series, then I am all for it. So, good job, Blooper Team. Um, there's a couple other, you know, there's a film adaptation and all coming out. Hopefully those are good too. Um, and then there's multiple endings as the first one had there. So... Next up, uh, Banjo Tooie is coming to Switch um, as part of the. Uh, I guess it's going to be on the Nintendo Switch Online collection of games. Um, I I'll be honest, I've never touched Banjo Tooie. I've played Banjo Kazooie a good bit, not fully. Um, may or may not be a game that'll pop up for Retro Roulette for me, uh, but I have not played Banjo Tooie. Um, and uh, it was, um, you know, part of Rare Replay and all that. Nuts to Bolts is still out there. Don't know if that's going to come to Xbox or that was an Xbox game. So I don't probably not coming to Nintendo. But I'm glad to see that they got both of the N64 ones on there for the Nintendo gamers uh, to play. Um, I, I like I like the updates they're giving for the Nintendo Switch Online. I think they're doing a good job with that. Next up, uh, Project 007, which is the thing I've been really looking forward to from IO, um, is for Young Bond for Gamers, it says, um, and hopefully the start of a new trilogy, um, like Hitman was. Um, so, um, I will, until they show me a bad game, I am all in on IO, uh, doing this stuff, um, and, yeah, so... They are going to, um, you know, try and try and actually make a good James Bond game. There's only been really outside of GoldenEye, which is mainly because of the multiplayer. I mean, Nightfire might be the only one that was any good that I actually enjoyed playing. Uh, but yeah, yeah. So the uh, yeah, so they're all, you know, all in on this, and I am. I'm excited to see what the first 007 game is from IO. Um, the 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 legacy. Um, yeah. yeah, it'd be interesting. I, I would assume they might want to do the F the uh, third person like Hitman. Um, I feel that that's in their wheelhouse. Um, uh, but it'll be fun to see who if they they should create their own bond to be honest, um, and not use one of the bonds. But I don't know how the bond license people feel about that. Uh, but if if anybody can do a good thing with the bond license, I am one hundred percent putting it on IO here. All right, next up, metaphor. Uh, this is for Dan if he's listening. Uh, Metaphor, uh, Refantasio, was originally planned as a Lord of the Rings-style RPG. Um, yeah, in an uh, uh, interview with uh, Fumetsu, um, they said, In the early stages, we were considering a high fantasy setting with elves, dwarves, and the like. Um, we had uh, uh, Sojima, uh, the Persona artist, uh, come up with a bunch of sketches, but it kind of felt ordinary. It didn't look like something that was unique to us, which this game very much feels very, very, very unique. Um, and then he said, as we discussed how to make characters stand out and what to do and what to be more flexible about, things started gradually started changing and shaping up to our liking. Um, however, I wouldn't say that we strayed onto an unexpected path. Rather, I felt like we settled on the current style just by pursuing what we wanted to do. And I am happy they did. Um, it is very much um, in their wheelhouse. And 
I am always, I come from a, uh, an idea with, with music especially, um, that when you, when you make a new album, it needs to sound different than your previous album, but still feel like you, the band. Like, don't go too far from what makes you you. Um, perfect example, um, at least for me personally, Paramore's done such a good job of that. Um, the only time they sounded a little samey was between um, uh, Riot and uh, the second album, I forget. The one with the butterfly on the front. Um, those albums sounded, you know, kind of similar. A um, little bit more grown up, but kind of similar. But then you go, you know, from self-titled to... Um, you know, um, after laughter and all that, like still keep it the same, but uh, kind of be different. Um, you know, I feel like the same should be, um, with video games, um, going too far out of your comfort zone, unless you nail it. Like you, there is a, there is a like level you have to hit. Like the only example I can think of is Tango Game Works and Hi-Fi Rush. They went far out of their, um, horror things and was just like yeah we're making a uh, rhythm game with a guy with a guitar arm have at it <laughs> um, and they nailed it and it was fucking great uh, but I'm glad that they stuck with what they know best in terms of they didn't make it look like all the other Persona games um in terms of exactly like shadows and things like that but just the outlandishness of the characters very much stayed in line with what they they do so i'm glad that they knew they wanted to do high fantasy but then didn't submit to the um what's it called um pressure to make it too much like uh lord of the rings um you know game of thrones or anything like that so, good on them. All right, and finally, um, I don't know if I've done these last week because um, it's been kind of a blur, but um, your PlayStation Plus category, um, you know, this is the update of the original story, I believe. Um, the uh, extras and premium tiers can download Dead Island 2 two-point campus um, at no additional cost. Um, I think the rest of them uh, were free to everyone, maybe. Uh, but, yeah. So this is kind of an update on that. I think I did cover this last week. But just so you know, if you do have PlayStation Plus, um, at least extra and premium, um, you get the chance of Dead Island 2, two-point campus, the Dark Pictures Anthology, The Devil and Me, Return to Monkey Island, Dino Crisis, the Last Clockwinder, and um, they have something else here, which is a bunch of these like Tour de France games and Firefighting Simulator and Ghostbusters and things like that. And Grease. Grease is a good game. Play Grease if you haven't played Grease yet. Um, and moving on to Xbox. Um, phase 2 uh, for uh, Game Pass, um, which I just downloaded today. Um, South Park, The Fractured But Whole. Um, Donut County, MechWarrior 5, um, Call of Duty, um, which I have, um, Modern Warfare 3, which I already had, I don't, that's, I guess this is all updating these Call of Duties on October 25th, um, Ashen, um, if you have, uh, uh, all three, um, and then PC exclusive, but if you have Ultimate, you get it. Uh, Dead Island 2 StarCraft Remastered and StarCraft 2 Campaigns Collection. So if you're a StarCraft fan, you'll be able to download some StarCraft stuff um, if you have Game Pass Ultimate or PC Game Pass. So um, be on the lookout for that stuff. Um, I The thing I was most surprised about was uh, South Park um, here because I played the, the first one. first one was really good. Um, I think it's added a lot of old South Park jokes that I loved. Um, so I'm wondering how the fractured butthole is, um, in, uh, in terms of, of if it has newer jokes that I don't know about. Um, 
And then Dota County is a game that I've been wanting to play. So, yeah, so there you go. Um, I'll try and let me go through back to another story. Or we'll go back to Big Mark to finish. Um, because, again, the political ads, I don't think we really need to see them. But, um, yeah, let's go back to Big Mark. Hi. Um, yeah, so, yeah, that's the news. Um, yeah, so back to Big Mark here. Just for a reminder about Extra Life, since it is coming out um, soon. Uh, November 2nd will be our big stream, Extra Life, on game day. Um, it'll be starting 9 a.m. Um, we'll be doing uh, 12 to 18 hours. Um, the only way the start time changes is if I have basketball that Saturday, then it will start later. Um, and uh, we'll just still do 12 to 18 hours. It'll just start later, and I'll be friggin' tired. But uh, we'll still do it um, for you guys. So... Um, be on the lookout for that. If you want to donate, the website is a tinyurl.com slash extra life year nine, the number nine. Um, they'll also be linked in the description here in both YouTube and on uh, your podcatcher of choice. Um, so be sure to go there. Um, if you're more in the Roxy Foxy community, she is also going to be doing some streams um, as a team member. Um, of our uh, thing here so all of her uh, fundraising goes to our total team total um, I don't know why I said it like that but yeah uh, you'll be starting to see on Monday um, thank you Tom in the chat um, you'll start to see um, starting uh, next week um, I will have uh, I'm either Monday or Friday um, not sure I think I should be able to have enough time to do it tomorrow um, I'm going to have the little donation thing, like, up here-ish, like, up here or down here, depending on, I think for Mario, it might be, you know, over here, um, and for, uh, Eternal Nights, it might be, like, down here, um, I just gotta see where it doesn't interact with anything, and same for Near. Near would be the same as Eternal Nights, um, so yeah yeah so that's it um we're gonna be live every saturday after that the ninth tom is handling some hours um i'm gonna be playing my normal saturday game that might be at a weird time um because i might have uh some family things to do during the day on the ninth or in the evening on the ninth so i may pop in at like midnight um to play some return nights um on the ninth but um then you know the second ninth 16th and 23rd we're going to be doing some type of stream, whether it's me doing a six to ten hour stream, or it's other people doing shorter streams, or we're hosting uh, Jen's stream. And just something every just to help raise, and then we'll always have our New Year's Eve show where I play Fuser and delete the Vit VOD so we don't get DMCA'd. Um, I'm going to try and see if I can hack into this stuff to get like newer songs on there. There's a way to do that. I don't know if I'm technically inclined to be able to do that well, but I'm gonna try. But anyway. That's the update for Extra Life, and that is the end of the game hour. Um, we'll see you guys uh, tonight for Super Mario Brothers 2, if you're listening to this or watching YouTube. If you're on Twitch, we'll see you tomorrow. And then we'll be back on Friday with Nier and the News Hour. So uh, thank you guys for joining me, and we'll see you next time. <laughs> Bye! Oh, I forgot to change the end screen. My apologies. <laughs>